All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick on the Power. So I've got a couple interesting stories for you guys today. The first story is going to be about professional bodybuilder Nathan Diasha. Now, Nathan had a fantastic year in 2018. Um, he won the New York Pro, he won the Cali Pro, and he took eighth at the 2018 Mr. Olympia. Now, unfortunately, the story about Nathan today is not a positive one. Now, it was brought to my attention that Nathan actually appeared in court earlier this month um, on drug-related charges. So the article says, three people appeared in court today on drug charges relating to cocaine, MDMA, and anabolic steroids. And this article was posted on January 4th, 2019. Um, so in the article, it says Richard Green, age 47, Georgina Green, age 40, and Nathan Diasha, age 32, of Grange Lane, Liverpool, all appeared in North Devon Magistrates Court. So the first guy mentioned in this article was charged with possessing a quantity of MDMA, cocaine, and anabolic steroids with the intent to supply, um, possessing criminal property, namely the cash, um, and then concealing or disguising that criminal property, again, namely the cash. Now, Mrs. Green was charged with essentially the same thing minus the MDMA, um, and both of these uh, individuals entered no pleas. Now, Nathan Diash, on the other hand, pleaded not guilty to supplying anabolic steroids. All three were sent to Exeter Crown Court, and the next hearing will be on February 1st. Now, let's keep an open mind here. Again, this is innocent until proven guilty. He did plead not guilty, so there's a very high chance that he could not be involved in this or not be guilty of what they're accusing him of. I mean, again, he is a professional bodybuilder. Um, this could simply be a case of he looked like he fit the bill, um, for this charge, there's no further indication of what evidence they had or what other charges, um, you know, might have contributed to them um, bringing him to court on these charges. But right now, this is the story and this is the information that we do have. Now, I am a fan of Nathan Diasha. I, I, like I said, he had a great year in 2018. He did very well at the Olympia. He won two major pro shows. Um, and 2019 was looking to be a very good year for him. So hopefully this isn't going to be a situation where um, this somehow inhibits his ability to compete in 2019 or really sets him back. And I really don't like reporting negative stories like this. But again, when you're reporting bodybuilding news, you got to report the good and the bad. And I do think this was a newsworthy story uh, because this is a really big name in bodybuilding. Again, top 10 at the Mr. Olympia um, and winning a major show like the New York Pro. This is a big name guy, um, and this is a story that unfortunately we did have to report here. But hopefully Nathan Diash's not guilty plea is true, and he is exonerated of these charges and is able to continue to compete in 2019, um, you know, unrestricted. All right, so the next story that I have for you guys is the movie Bigger is finally available online on some streaming platforms. It appears that you can now buy the movie Bigger on iTunes and also on digitalmuscle.com. Now, I actually plan on watching this movie tonight because I wasn't able to see it um, in theaters. It had a very limited theatrical release, um, only a handful of states um, where it was actually being shown. So I wasn't able to see it when it first came out um, back in 2018. But now it is available on iTunes right now. Um, it's $12.99, so actually not that bad of a price. And if you don't want to buy it, they actually do have the option to rent it for $4.99, which I think is fantastic. Um, when Generation Iron 3 came out, I believe it was at least $20 and there was no option to rent it. So you had to buy um, Generation 3. Um, so bigger, almost half the price to buy it and they have the option to rent. Now, I think it's important to note here that this is a movie about Joe Weider, um, specifically about Joe Weider. Um, a lot of people in the comment sections when I've talked about this movie before were expecting this to be a movie that was more heavily focused on a young Arnold Schwarzenegger because of all the you know, media hype generated around the fact that Callum Von Moger was playing a young Arnold. So a lot of people were expecting a more Arnold-centric focus in this movie. Um, but I think a lot of people are going to be disappointed by that because from what I understand, um, you know, Callum only has a very brief role in this movie. Arnold is really only covered briefly in this movie. And again, the main focus is on the life and times of Joe Weider, the, the founder of the IFBB. And so far, the movie is actually doing pretty well in terms of critical reviews. Um, on IMDb, it has a 7.1 out of 10, which is actually pretty good for an IMDb rating of a smaller production movie like this. Okay, cool. And it also looks like you can watch it on Amazon, too, for the same price that you can watch it on iTunes, $4.99 to rent um, and $12.99 to buy. So I'm going to watch this movie later tonight and maybe do a video giving an actual in-depth review um, on what I thought of the movie so you guys can decide whether or not you want to watch it. 
I'm assuming at some point in the future, this is going to be available for free um, on other streaming platforms like Hulu or Netflix, but I'm not entirely sure, um, you know, after reading how much money or the lack thereof that this movie made in actual theaters, I'm assuming that the primary money to be made from this video is going to be in licensing deals with, uh, you know, platforms like Netflix and Hulu. Um, so only time will tell whether or not that happens. I'm assuming they're going to make some money, you know, from this, uh, you know, purchase release on streaming platforms. But I'm assuming it's going to be available for free at some point. So I'm going to go ahead and roll the trailer for you guys right here. Hello, Arnold. My name is Joe Wheeler. How would you like to be the face of bodybuilding? I am training you to be the best in the world. Are you nuts? Are you? What you do not realize is all these men want is to compete against the very best. Three, two, one. Copycats from Canada, huh? Maybe he should be taken seriously. You do create strong competitors, Mr. Hawk. Thank you. But to create an impeccable man? One more, one more. It takes dignity and grace, qualities you know nothing about. Good luck. This is just the beginning. We will show him just how well our methods work. <laughs> You're relentless, Joe. Oh, my. You know what your problem is? You have to man it up, intensify. Let's do this. Exciting, right? Kid, welcome to the big time. We're the biggest and the best, Joe. You're welcome. Now, in other news, Arnold Schwarzenegger's 29-year-old daughter, Katherine Schwarzenegger, just got engaged. Um, and this is newsworthy because of who she got engaged to. She actually just got engaged to Chris Pratt, um, who was formerly married to Anna Faris, who was the star of the TV show Mom. Um, but Chris Pratt, in his own right, is pretty much a movie megastar right now, appearing in the Jurassic World franchise, also appearing in the Guardians of the Galaxy movies and the other Marvel movies that are associated with that. And there is actually a 10-year age gap um, between him and Catherine. He is 39 and she is 29. But, I mean, it's kind of ironic. I mean, who could have a more intimidating father-in-law than Arnold Schwarzenegger? If you're Chris Pratt, you know, you think you're doing well, you're in these movies, you're making money, um, then you end up uh, getting married to the daughter of arguably the biggest, most successful action star of all time. It's got to feel, you know, a little bit emasculating. Um, Chris Pratt's net worth is roughly $40 million, while the governator, Arnold Schwarzenegger, his net worth is $400 million, over $400 million. So he's worth more than 10 times um, what Chris Pratt is worth, which is pretty impressive, again, considering the recent franchises that Chris Pratt has been involved with. So um, congratulations to Chris and Catherine, and congratulations to Arnold as well. I'm sure this is exciting for him um, to see his daughter getting married. So I wish the best um, for everybody involved. And of course, the final story in this video, not related to bodybuilding, but directly related to YouTube. So I'm sure most of you guys watching this are familiar with PewDiePie and the ongoing battle um, with T-Series for PewDiePie to remain the number one most subscribed YouTube channel on YouTube. Well, the gap has been closing and T-Series recently just hit 80 million subscribers um, and is rapidly catching up with PewDiePie. The gap is now as small as 378,000 subs between the two. Um, PewDiePie actually just hit 81 million, but it's getting really close. So I wanted to encourage all of you guys, if you have not subscribed already, please subscribe to PewDiePie. Um, I just wanted to do my part here. Um, there's just something about, you know, T-Series is kind of this corporation YouTube channel where they pump out these videos um, that are produced by this media company. And it's not like one individual guy, whereas PewDiePie is just a guy with a camera and a computer uploading videos, you know, and became the number one YouTuber just by making videos himself. And all of a sudden, this corporation in India that's like mass producing these videos with all these companies and thousands of employees um, has like skyrocketed to 80 million subscribers and is on track to surpass um, PewDiePie. 
So as a YouTuber myself, that is just one guy in his office with a microphone and a computer. Um, I really respect the hustle of, of PewDiePie growing his channel to 80 million subscribers. 80 million people follow this guy just to watch him in front of a camera, you know, being funny. I, I think that's really impressive. Um, I think that's commendable. And I want to see him stay on top for as long as possible. So I think if 32 million people can like a photo of an egg on Instagram, we can get enough people, you know, to keep PewDiePie on top, at least to get him to 100 million to be the first channel to hit 100 million. So that's the video for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please give the video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.